next guest won the New Hampshire Democratic presidential primary last night. Please welcome Senator Bernie Sanders. All right, Senator Sanders, uh, first of all, congratulations on the New Hampshire primary. Thank you very much. Um, you uh, won not only, uh, you won by 22 points, as somebody said at the beginning of the show, but uh, you also won some interesting categories. You won 86% of people 18 to 24. You know, uh, you're like the, you're, it's like your puppy monkey baby, okay? <laughs> Do you know what that reference is? Do you know, uh, do you know, what, that, do you know what that means? Actually, no, no. No one. <laughs> listen, no one knows what it means. That's the secret. I feel, I it's feel complete better. nonsense. It's okay. complete nonsense. Okay. So wh why do you think the, the younglings like you? I think for two reasons. Um, by definition, young people are idealistic. And they look at a world with so many problems, and they say, why not? Why can't all people in this country have health care? Why can't we make public colleges and universities tuition-free? Why not? Why do we have so much... Okay, well, the answer is, the answer is that it's expensive. It's a well, very expensive thing to do. But, and, but the second part that I think young people are thinking about is how does it happen that with all of this technology and productivity in our economy, they are likely to have a lower standard of living than their parents, while almost all new income and wealth is going to the top 1%. So they're not dumb, and they're saying, hey, we want a fair shake as well. So I think those are a couple of reasons that gravitate into our campaign. Now, that sounds like uh, class warfare. If you're saying that every, like the, most of it's going to the top 1% and, and they want fairness, how do you achieve that fairness? Because the top 1% has a lot of influence with the government, and they're not just going to give it up, you know? Well, they're so going to fight you tooth and nail. And I'll, give you, I'll, I'll tell you how I know. I'm in the top 1%. <laughs> okay? As a matter of fact, to hell with that. The top 1% parks my car. I'm way <laughs> higher than that. Those guys and girls are going to fight you very hard. Why do you think you can make this change? I think because we have reached a point in American society where people are just very, very unhappy with the status quo. Do you think that there's a similarity in appeal between you and Donald Trump? Because I had uh, Bill O'Reilly on here on Monday night, and he said, it's, you guys are the same thing with different haircuts. And... <laughs> and the polls show that there were a lot of people in New Hampshire who, up until the last minute, hadn't made up their mind between you or Donald Trump. Well, let me say something about uh, Bill O'Reilly. Bill said, and this is a reason why people might want to vote for me, Bill said that if I won the presidency, he would move to Ireland. <laughs> so, electing me, electing me president is a twofer. You get Sanders and you get, you know, Bill to go to Ireland. And, uh, all right. But there are people who, who, yeah. who are trying to choose between you yes. and Trump. Why would that be? You don't seem like two sides of the same coin. Well, I think uh, a lot of uh, Donald Trump's supporters are angry. Uh, they are, in many cases, people who are working longer hours for low wages. Mm -hmm. uh, they're people who are really worried about what's going to happen to their kids. But I think what they have done is responded to Trump's false message which suggests that if we keep Muslims out of this country or if we keep scapegoating uh, Latinos or Mexicans, that somehow our country becomes better. I think that's a false solution. And my view is that, yes, people have a right to be angry. You have a right to be angry when uh, we are the only major country on earth that doesn't provide paid family and medical leave, uh, when we have more people living in poverty today than almost any time in the history of this country. People have a right to be angry, but what we need to be is rational in figuring out how we address the problems and not simply scapegoating minorities. Well, you say... Your opponent... Your opponent, Mrs. Clinton, has said that you offer false solutions, things that will not be achieved. For instance, single-payer health care, universal health care. We have just gone through eight years of constant fighting over what was really uh, not, a, uh, uh, not making health care public. Our health care is private. It was very good for private industry, right. Obamacare. The insurance companies were all for it because everybody had to pay in. So it's not a socialized medicine. Right. And still people lost their mind. 
You want to actually introduce socialized medicine. Nope. Okay. They'll be voting to repeal this until the moon falls into the Pacific. <laughs> okay, I, let me rephrase the question and ask you this. I'm not, hold on. <laughs> okay, you may. Okay. <laughs> How does it happen that every other major country on Earth, mm -hmm. all of Europe, mm -hmm. our neighbors to the North, Canada, are able to provide universal health care to every man, woman, and child in those countries. They're able to have prescription drugs cost substantially less than in the United States of America. And their total cost per capita are much, much less than in our country. Well, my, my guest on Monday, Bill O'Reilly, said because there are 17 people in Denmark. <laughs> And there are 300 million people here. Well, he says it doesn't scale up for our side. No, that's an abs well, not to disagree with my good friend Bill O'Reilly, but he's, as usual, wrong. Uh, look, you know, Germany does it, the United Kingdom does it, mm -hmm. Canada does it, mm -hmm. countries all over the world do it. What the issue is not what we should do. Most people believe that health care should be a right. Most people think it's absurd that the pharmaceutical industry continues to rip us off and one out of five Americans can't even afford the prescriptions their doctors write. That's not the debate. The question is, do we have the ability to stand up to the private insurance companies and the drug companies? I believe that when people are aroused, when they're organized, when they're prepared to stand up and fight back, yes, we can take on the drug companies and the insurance companies. <laughs> But well, we got to take a break to sell some products for some enormous corporations, and then we'll be back with more Bernie Sanders. Stick around.